Hey guys, how's it going? DUJ2 here. Welcome back to Fortnite. And, um, so I was about to, uh, I was about to release another video, a, a different video. Some of you might know which video that is, but we got something very interesting today. Um, and I had to stop, uh, and start something else. So if you're on the Epic website and on the forums, um, well, on the forums, let's see, on the forums, if you see this on the forums, uh, we got a new, uh, something new today that says introducing the perk recombobulator. Uh, and this happened like not even an hour ago. It's crazy. So uh, then if you follow the links, if you go into the links, it'll take you to the news. And in the news, um, it's right there. So first of all, this is a pretty big deal. Not only did they, not only have they brought this to us, there's a lot of information we're going to go over, but it's also right in the news on the Epic Games web website. So um, this is actually kind of huge, guys. This is actually kind of huge. So if we go into it, uh, this is what we're going to see right here, okay? So item perk recombobulator. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to read this whole thing first, uh, and then we're going to talk about what I understand so far about this. Because the first time I read it, I was like, oh, no, no, I don't like it. But after reading it a few more times, I'm kind of starting to see that they have put a lot of time and attention into this. But it also makes me feel like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. Let's get through it. Um, since Fortnite saved the world's launch, we have envisioned a way for players to take steps to customize their items to suit their playstyle. It's here, and we want to share it with you. So, first of all, it's not here yet, okay? <laughs> Again, uh, Fortnite has a habit of saying things are here when they're actually not here yet. <laughs> so, um, this is going to be in the patch version 4.2. So, they told us a long time ago, actually, that May 15th is when we were going to get the next patch. And it's going to happen next week. So, May 15th, next week. Uh, May 15th is a Tuesday. So, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, hopefully, we will be getting this update, okay? Uh, introducing the perk Recombobulator. In patch version 4.2, we're introducing a way to, for you to choose and upgrade the perk loadout, loadout for your favorite weapons and traps. Unlock the perk Recombobulator. The perk re Recombobulator is unlocked when you complete Plankerton Storm Shield Defense 2. So if you, you still have time, if you're not in Plankerton yet, make sure you get to Plankerton and get that Storm Shield Defense 2 done. At that point, a sequence of two side quests will become available that, upon completion, reward you with a large number of brand new resources to use in the perk Recombobulator. Be sure to complete these quests to get a head start with your item customization. Okay. Uh, to access the perk Recombobulator, visit the up item upgrade screen and navigate to the new Modify Perks option. So you're going to open it, you're going to go to Upgrade, and then you're going to go to Modify Perks right here. Reperk and Perk Up. Replacing or upgrading perks. So not only do we get to reroll perks, we get to upgrade perks. Cost two new resources, Reperk and Perk Up. Reperk is available through all mission difficulties from low threat planker missions and beyond. Perk up begins at the same time as Reperk, but also has different rarity levels. The rarer versions become available as progress, uh, players progress to higher and higher mission difficulties. This will appear in mission rewards, mission alert rewards, repeatable quests, and the event store for the duration of the block source event. So it kind of feels like, um, I mean, I hope. I hope I don't have to get into Twine, okay? I hope I don't have to get into Twine for the perks that I want. If I do, if I need to do that, I will do it. Um, but right now, I'm hoping that I don't have to. In addition, you'll be able to choose which element you want on your weapon. This modification requires elemental resources named Fire Up, Amp Up, and Frost Up. You can find these resources in Mission Alert Rewards and Repeatable Quests. Okay, so, so far, it's pretty simple and good to go, right? Okay, so this is where it starts getting a little weird. So there's the there's the there's gonna be how it's gonna look. There's gonna be our um, element or our perk that we're doing, and how we can upgrade it. So we can actually upgrade it 
uh, or replace it. So there's going to be the elemental energy and 15 damage. We can replace it with fire and 10, nature and 10, physical and 32, water and 10. So we're going to be able to replace things. Um, and then we don't know about the actual perk up, do we? No, we haven't seen that yet. Anyway, okay. So this is where it starts getting a little kooky. New items versus legacy items. The perk recombobulator is a big change from the previously existing perk system. It allows player to, players to acquire more powerful perks than ever before. Perks that they don't want with ones that are more desirable and invest in those perks over time to develop the perfect item. So, there is no longer going to be such a thing as the best weapon in the game. Well, no, there is going to be now. Okay, so this is something I'm going to, be, I'm going to say right now. Because of this new system being introduced, we are going to be able to say this is the best shotgun in the game, this is the best AR in the game, the best pistol, the best whatever. The reason we're going to be able to say that is because the base stats are not going to change. But from there, we're going to be able to modify and create the very best weapon. But, but, this is the thing. Please understand, there's going to be several different variations of the best weapon. I'm actually working on a video right now, kind of explaining what I'm going to be taking to Obsidian and what I'm going to be taking to Shadow Shard. I've actually been waiting for the perk reroll system before I do anything because I didn't know if we were going to have to take one item and put it into another. It would like, you know, combine two items to be able to get uh, reroll perks, you know, like some other games or things like that. But it seems like that's not going to be the case. I'm still not going to sell all my doubles, though. I'm going to wait. Uh, I'm gonna wait and see if there is some if, like if you if you like sell something you get more of these items or something I don't know yet so I'm still gonna wait I'm not gonna sell my items yet um, but it's gonna very much depend what you want to do with an item for example if you're all about DPS you'd be surprised it's not about how much damage you get and that's that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say um, I, like I said, I have another video coming out soon where I explain exactly why the best weapons and the best AR that you think you might have might not be the best for what you want to use. Also, you have to understand that not only do we have weapons, but we have the hero system too. It depends what hero you're using and for what that weapon might be godly with a certain hero squad, but if you use another hero squad, that weapon might not be the greatest. Like, let's say, take the Siege Breaker, for example. If you have two Siege Breakers, you might have one Siege Breaker that's going to be absolutely destructive with a soldier in the soldier setup. But if you change to, like, a ninja setup like me, that AR might be totally useless. Because you're basing yourself on the stats and the perks and the bonuses of that squad. So, you might need a different one with different stats, different perks. Sorry, different perks. Um, so this is going to become really good to be able to develop different weapons, including the fact that you might need one day, let's say a siege breaker. You might need a siege breaker with, which actually I'm not really that much of a fan of siege breaker. I'm liking the razor blade more, but that's just me. Um, so if you might need a siege breaker with fire, one with nature and one with energy and one with water. So you might need four different siege breakers and out of those four different siege breakers, Depending on what your hero setup is, you might need different ones as well. So you might, I mean, one day you might look at my game and I'm going to have 12 different razor blades. Not siege, I don't like the siege breaker. I might have 12 different razor blades because I'm going to need one of each element. And then within that each element, I'm going to need one of each setup or build that I want. But we'll see. Uh, with this benefit comes one big restriction. Each perk slot on an item is limited in which perks it can actually contain. Newly acquired items are automatically set up to adhere to these new restrictions and players can begin upgrading and replacing perks on them immediately. However, legacy items, anything we've gotten before this point, items acquired before patch 4.2 do not automatically fit into the new structure. Such items must be converted before they're allowed to be upgraded and re respect via the perk recombobulator. So, if you already have a godly weapon, you might not want to redo this. Um, I don't understand why they're doing this. It might be the fact that when you do convert them, <coughs> you might end up uh, losing something. Uh, they might change. I don't know. 
we're going to have to wait and see exactly what they mean by converting and what the drawbacks or the negatives are of converting. Um, also, like they said, the big restriction, each perk slot and item is limited to which person can actually contain. Uh, I think that's what it's going to mean is that you can't put like an, uh, you can't put like a, um, let's say an, uh, an energy, 10 energy plus damage and affliction on the first slot. Okay. You're going to have to put it in like the fourth slot or third slot or fifth slot. I think, especially because if you notice, or if you've, if you've had, uh, and I can actually show you guys here for a second. Let's, let's, let me show you guys real quick. So if you have a weapon, let's say, okay, here we go. So, um, boop, boop, uh, boop, 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 boop. Actually, they're going to be up here, aren't they? Yeah. Let's go with legendary weapons. Um, let's say I have, um, all right, let's go for a shotgun. Okay. So let's say I have a shotgun here. Uh, let me see if I have another shotgun close to it. Uh, there. Okay. So this is kind of the same. So let's say we have a stampede, right? Uh, let me compare. So I'm going to compare the stampede to the founders deconstructor. Okay. So the reason why I'm going to compare these two is that, I mean, they're not comparable in damage and everything, whatever, but if we go down and we look at their build, look at the builds, this is the stampede. The stampede has, um, damage, blah, 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 whatever. Actually, wow. This is a really good stampede, man. This is a beautiful stampede. And in the fifth slot, it has 10 weapon damage plus energy. And that's usually the normal build, right? It isn't until level 25 that we get the, we get the, um, uh, the, uh, the possibility of an attribute, but in the founders weapons, founders weapons, look at that level 15. Uh, and you can see this very clearly in a lot of epic weapons. The fact that you are able to get uh, in. Well, I think it's only in the I think it's only the legendary, actually. Sorry, I mean, I think it's only the um, the founders. If I'm not mistaken, there's a bear. Oh, you know what? Let's compare this one. Let's compare this bear cat to this bear cat. Back. Uh, bear cat compare to this bear cat. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so these are two exactly the same Bearcat. Once a Bearcat, once a Founder's Bearcat. Uh, and check it out. Again, the regular Bearcat has the energy and affliction all the way up here and the 20th in level 20. The Founder's Bearcat at level 5, it has the attribute. So I think that's the difference in the Founder's weapons. I don't know if they say legacy weapons. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this for Founder's weapons. And if we do it, I don't know if they're going to make it so that we can actually put in attribute skills or attribute perks before we reach the, well, the last level. Uh, because if you can do that, then you can build some crazy stuff. Not that we're not taking all of our weapons anyway up to 2020, 30, 30 anyway. But, you know, for people starting out the game, having one of those with an early attribute is going to be a big difference. Um, converting legacy items. When players attempt to modify the perks of a legacy item, they will first be prompted to opt into the converting legacy item system. Before opting to convert the item, the system presents you with a before and after preview of any changes that might occur to this item. In some cases, there will be no changes, and in others, the perk loadout may be altered. Sometimes a free slot may appear. Free slots allow players to choose what goes into the slot for free after the conversion is accepted. Again, I want to be very, very careful here because... I don't know if some really awesome weapons are going to get changed too much. We should also take a look and make sure that nothing else is changing. But again, I'm going to take a look at that. Also, the one thing I want to talk about too, why is it that this 45% damage to slow and snare targets is such a high rarity? I still think that I'm missing out on a lot by not focusing on slow and snare targets. I need to learn that better. In all cases, the conversion process is free and on a, on a per item basis. That means that each legacy item must be converted to work with the Berkeley Rookie Bobbitter one at a time. It's going to take me a while to get all my converted. Once the process is performed on an item, you're free to begin customizing the item's perks. Perk slots. See, the, my question is, I don't know why they're doing this and not just automatically doing this. It feels like there might be some... It feels like there might be something they're not telling us right now, you know, uh, that we might be losing something. Uh, 
Um, okay, so every new item require, acquired or legacy item converted rolls perks a little differently than before. Elemental items now have a dedicated perk slot that determines what type of elemental damage that weapon deals, rather than adding elemental damage on top of affliction damage snares or other effects. Okay, so we're not going to have the duels anymore. Ouch. Each perk now has five power levels, up from three. Players can now upgrade individual perks to reach these higher power levels. That means if you want your legacy item to reach its full potential, you'll want to convert it to work with the perk recombobulator. Each slot perk has a range of possible perk types that it can contain. Players can choose to replace a perk in a given slot, but the list of perks that a slot can be changed to is limited in scope and varies from slot to slot. Some perks cannot be changed at all. Conclusion, the perk recombobulators are next step towards creating a thriving item economy where you decide how to best create the items you want. We're looking forward to hearing your feedback on this feature as we adjust and tune in going into the future. Thank you and happy recombobulating. All right, so again, item perk recombobulator. <coughs> okay, I'm going to say this right now. I like it, but I want more information, okay? I think that the way that the system is set up, it looks really good. I don't like the fact that we're going to have to collect new materials. Okay, so let's let's do the things I don't like. Two things I don't like. I don't like the fact you're going to have to collect new materials, and we don't exactly really know what these materials are yet. There's going to be six different types, five, six, several different types of materials or stuff that we're going to have to collect. Um, I kind of wish that they would have kept it really simple and just like put another one into another one, reroll it kind of thing, you know? Um, the problem with that is that it's a very, very greedy way for a company to do things. Um, this is a much more fair way. This is a fair way because all you got to do is play. And this goes back to my whole, you know, how to not get scammed thing. Um, this, like, it's, it's amazing because I love how Epic Games does this. Epic Games is just basically saying, play the game. All you got to do is play the game. Play the game. You're going to collect the stuff. You're not at a higher enough level to get the stuff. Play the game. Just play the game. You don't need to trade. You don't need to do anything. And that's something else that we're going to get into a little more because this is going to change trading a lot. I'm afraid for the worst, but I'll talk about the, the trading, what I believe is going to happen in the trading changes in the near future. But anyway, so that's the first thing I don't like. I don't like the fact that we have to collect all these different materials and we don't really know. It, is it going to be like bacon was before where you're going to have to do like 20 missions just to get enough to get through a mission? Hopefully they balance that well. I, I think they will. The second thing and probably the biggest thing that I don't like is that we don't have any information on when we're going to be able to unlock things. I'm hoping that for now it's going to be Plankerton. Like complete Plankerton completely and you'll be able to get everything. It might be a little difficult for you, but you're going to be able to get it. Get into Kenny and pretty much everything will be available in Kenny. Um, I don't want to go into Twine yet. I really don't. I don't feel that I've really discovered and explored uh, Kenny yet. Yes, if I grind it, I can get into Twine in no time. But I, this is the thing. I don't want to be a level 100 something. I just don't want to be a level 100 something yet. I, I'm not ready yet. I, I enjoy the level I am. If you guys have noticed, I know a lot of people have noticed actually, my personal level is going up very, very slow. I am no longer upgrading my survivors the same way as before. What I'm focusing on now is I'm focusing on finding the perfect survivors that I want, slotting them and leveling them up. My mythics, of course, I'm going to take all of them up to level uh, four stars, max them out, but I'm going to hold back on my other survivors. I'm not pushing for my level that much anymore. My level is going to very slowly go up, even though I've been playing a ton. I'm holding back on that on purpose. Um, I may level up my heroes as well, you know, and focus on those. I'm going to be focusing on enjoying the time I have in Canny yet. So I really hope that they're not going to be like, hey, you want this awesome perk? You got to go into Twine. You got to do level 100 plus missions, you know? I hope not. <laughs> I hope they don't do that. Um, so I hope that they do balance the fact that the majority of people right now who are playing Save the World are in Plankerton with a very large group going into Canny right now. Um, and of course, there are people who are, you know, I'll talk about that too. 
I want to talk about game etiquette, you know, if you're a certain level, not going into an extremely high mission, like what, you know, how you should act if you go into a mission, like not begging people for stuff or, or you know, or just, just, I, I want to make a video about that because a lot of people have asked me, you know, what should I tell this person or how should I tell this person if they're not doing anything? Or I just got into a match, I'm level 20 something and I'm in a match with level 80 somethings. What should I do? You know, or I got into a mission, you know, like I, I, I want to kind of give my opinion on that matter. But um, again, my my main thing right now is I want to know what it's going to take to get these perks and the upgrading weapons is a really cool thing. So they're actually introducing a classic system where you get to find your weapon, you get to work on your weapon and you get to develop your own weapon. Make it the best you can. Okay. So, what do I like about the system? I love the fact... Oh, and you know, the last thing I really don't like that much is the whole changing legacy items. Um, I kind of feel that we're going to have to be very, very careful whenever we do decide to upgrade or convert a legacy item, what we're going to lose. Because some items that some people have... I mean, some items that I have are nearly perfect i mean i have a couple of items that are just they're like practically perfect um for oh for example you know what the siege blade uh the siege breaker i got so i have a siege breaker that is like 99.9999 percent perfect uh, to me uh this one right here <clears throat> 45 crit damage 10 damage magazine size longer durability energy and inflation if this longer durability instead of longer durability it was crit chance beautiful um and now this is a general just you know like a weapon a, a solid great weapon um a couple of weeks ago i would have said this is a godly weapon i don't say that anymore because it doesn't have the perks that i'm looking for now oh yes oh yes um so I don't know if converting this item is going to take this away because they're going to be like, oh, you can only have one damage, you know? Oh, you can't have uh, the energy and the weapon damage. Oh, you want an affliction on there? You, well, you can't have it with the energy. So I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, also, exclusive items such as the Mercury LMG, such as the, um, the new Hacksaw, such as the Nocturno. Or the Founder's Weapons, the original Founder's Weapons. The weapons that you aren't allowed to recycle or put in your collection book. See? No collection book, no recycle. No collection book, no recycle. Uh, let's find one that we can't collection book or recycle. Uh, dude. Have I put everything in the thing? Wow. Sear oh, there we go. Recycle, but not collection book. <clears throat> Goodness gracious, how much stuff have I put in my... There we go. Recycle and collection book. Wow. Um, so, are we going to be able to work? Are we going to be able to modify our nocturnals? That's information that I like to see. But, in general, this and this is the thing. That's, like, the negative stuff aside, it's not really that negative. It's just a lot of questions. I have more questions. I have very particular questions. The stuff that I do like is the fact, like I said, they are giving us a chance to work on our weapons. I love when the game does that. I love when the game tells you, you know what? You can upgrade this weapon. Like, I, I don't want to mention other games, but there is another game out there that I've played for a very long time. And I played it since the first one where you could get your weapon and then you could upgrade your weapon and you could even slot and there's a lot of games like this that you could like slot gems into your weapon and slot runes and stuff like that to change the weapon to add perks to the weapon so you could alter the weapon in any way shape or form you wanted for yourself and because and this is the big one because we also have heroes, okay? We, we, have, we have heroes with their own styles, their own perks, their own bonuses. Bringing this that you can modify your weapon exactly to what you want to do, it just makes it beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful to me. I love it. I love it. So that's like the biggest, the biggest plus. I mean, I love the fact that they're giving us this control over to us. 
I love the fact that they are going to add so much more replayability to the game. I, you know, get. I know at the beginning I said I don't like the fact that we're going to have to collect new items, but I think it's because I just don't know what they are, or how to get them. I love the idea of adding replayability into the game where you can harvest stuff. Just like now, whenever you take out an enemy, they have a chance to drop, drop a little loot pile. Beautiful. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful uh, update. I mean, they, they. I love it. I love the fact that now we have little loot piles from enemies. Love it. It really makes the game a lot better, you know, like, even if you're just farming, it makes you feel so much better. Um, so, I love that. I love the replayability they're going to be adding to the game. I love all this extra stuff that they're adding to it. I, I love the fact that we're going to get to pick and choose, and it's not just going to be like, throw, get, buy llamas. It's not... It's not a game mechanism where they're telling you you have to spend money. You have to buy llamas. You have to spend a ton of money, a ton of V-Bucks to be able to get the chance to get another one of the same one, put it in, and then good luck. You might get great rolls. You might get horrible rolls. I like this. I really like this. So, honestly, I'm, I'm very happy with it coming. I have way more questions than I have answers right now. Um, and the last thing I'm going to say, which actually is going to be leading into another video I'm going to be making or releasing very soon. Uh, actually, I need to change that video because I'm halfway done with that video. But now this is going to change it completely. Um, and that is the trading that is going to happen from this. When someone is able to develop a very, very powerful weapon, it's going to be a very desired weapon. I'm going to talk about this more in depth in that other video, but I will say this, and, and I'm going to say this because um, I say it all the time in my streams, and a lot of people know that this is how I feel. I don't believe trading is supposed to be a thing in this game. I know a lot of us have been saying, and I, even I was saying it before, um, well, Epic Games needs to implement a trading system. They need to fix the trading or the scamming by introducing a trading system. Um, and I don't think that's the case. Epic Games hasn't really told us this yet, but I really think that they don't want people trading. This is not meant to be a game where you have to trade. You have to trade. It's not. It's a game where you get to immerse yourself in this world. You get to jump into this world. You get to play over and over again. You get to make friends, try challenges, collect things on your way, develop both your hero your squads your survivors your weapons everything all these different things that you get to individually develop and adjust to create the the perfect squad for you and it's 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 awesome but i think the reason why we don't have a trading system is because it's epic's way epic games way of saying hey you don't need to trade just play the game. All you have to do is play the game. Play the game. That now, now it's not even about buying llamas anymore. It's like, get yourself a siege breaker. Just, just get one. <laughs> now with the perk recombinator system, it's not even about buying llamas anymore. It's not about getting llamas, getting the perfect weapon. Now it's just like get one, get one of the weapons, and then play the game, and you could make that weapon work great for you you can it's it's awesome i mean i gotta say for someone who has spent quite a bit of money already on this game and i'm not mad about that but i am very happy to see that this is what they're doing that going forward and hopefully when the game goes free soon hopefully soon um that all these people who are coming into the game are going to see this gigantic game ahead of themselves where they can develop and spend so much time playing and so much replayability to be able to develop without having to spend money. Especially nowadays, seeing all these other games, the fact that there is a game being introduced where it's not based on money and spending real world money to develop yourself in the game, it's just about time. I love it. Well done, Epic Games. Well done. I, I love it. I really love it. So um, that's all I'm going to say about the Perk Recombobular system right now. Like I said, I know that it sounded like it was really negative there at the beginning. It's more because I have so many questions. I have so many questions. I have so many like, okay, what if, you know? 
or how do you do this? Um, I like how they introduced it. I would love if they did like a live stream or something or like a, an, an AMA or something, you know, uh, where they, we could kind of like, you know, po you know, probe a little more. But I think that they're going to do it in time. If they even release a video, if they release a video kind of showing like the steps and everything, I think that would be awesome. And if they don't, well, when it comes out next week, I am going to be ready to do that myself. I'm going to just... Well, I'm already playing a ton right now as it is, but I'm going to play even more. I'm going to play even more, figure out things even more. Um, and yeah, so anyway, that's my first look at the item perk recombobulator, guys. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think. Are you guys excited for this? What do you think is going to come from this? Um, for those of you wondering too, I will be announcing a new giveaway probably this weekend. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff. A lot of videos are coming today. I had to pause other videos I was working on to stop and do this because I did want to talk about this right away. Um, but uh, yes, I, for those of you also who are wondering, I will be releasing more and more videos uh, every single day. Uh, I'm planning to release at least one video like this every single day, kind of like just showing something different as well as releasing a gameplay video. And I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> because I can't spoil any surprises. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, I am DUJ2. This has been Fortnite talking about the item perk recombobulator that even though it says it's here, it's not here yet. Next week. Five days, guys. Five days. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.